All right, guys. So right now we're going to be covering chapter three, part two, uh, where we left off uh, on the previous video. Uh, we're going to be covering non-forfeiture options. Non-forfeiture options are benefits inside of a whole life cash value policy. Uh, these are guarantees that are built within a policy that cannot be forfeited by the policy owner. Uh, so what happens in a life insurance policy, the cash value they give the life insurance company gives you options of what you can do with the additional uh, additional money that's sitting in the cash value. Uh, those three options are cash surrender, reduced paid up, and extended term. You're going to want to get very familiar with these definitions. So the first one is cash surrender. Now, understand this: cash surrender is when you are going to exit the policy, you're gonna forfeit the entire policy and you're gonna take the money and you're gonna run. You're gonna, it's literally cash surrender. You're gonna surrender all the money that's in the cash. You're gonna take it with you and you're gonna leave. Now, what some very small little details you wanna know about the cash value is that if the cash value exceeds any premiums paid, you will owe taxes on it. So in a, in a policy, if you paid, let's call it $10,000 into a policy, and you happen to have 15,000 of cash value in the policy, then you will owe taxes on the $5,000 difference. Uh, once you cancel, once you cash out the policy, the insured is no longer covered, and you surrender that policy and it cannot be reinstated. So what I want you to write down under the cash surrender is that if you have any money that exceeds the cash, I'm sorry, exceeds the premiums paid, you will owe taxes. Once you take the money out and you surrender it, you cannot reinstate it. That's a huge thing. And there is also what is called surrender charges. So in life insurance policies and annuities, if you cancel a life insurance policy too soon, the life insurance company does have surrender charges that will be deducted from your cash value, which is, again, another trash-ass policy. Um, I hope people are laughing when they come back and read this <laughs> when they talk about this. Okay, so cash surrender. Just kind of keep it simple, guys. The next one is extended term. Under the extended term option, the insurer uses the policy cash value to convert to a term policy of the same face amount uh, as the former permanent policy. The duration of the new coverage will last as long as the cash value will purchase. So if the policy owner has neglected to select any of the non forfeiture options, the insurer will automatically implement the extended term option in the event of a termination of the original policy. So what happens is you, if you are letting this, about to let this policy lapse, meaning you, uh, you, you finish paying payments on it, and it's about to lapse, you can use the cash value to buy a term policy that would last you a little bit longer. And this one can actually last you longer than a whole life policy past 100 years old. Um, I don't know if they see that in here, but that will happen. Now, understand this. I want you to write to ex uh, next to extended term. This is the automatic option. The way I like to explain this is this. We all get these things in the mail. We all get letters and mail that we never open up. Well, if your policy is about to lapse and you haven't done anything with the money, the insurance company wants to keep your money. So they're just gonna automatically buy you more coverage and then your, your cash values run out, which means they in return kept the cash value and they just covered you for a little bit longer time. Uh, so just make sure you do see that the automatic option is the uh, extended term option. The next part is reduced paid up. Reduced paid up under this option the policy's cash value is used by the insurer as a single premium to purchase a completely paid up policy. So again, if your policy is about to lapse, this is when non-forfeiture options come into play. You say, hey, listen, 
I don't want to pay on a policy anymore. I would rather use this savings and buy a smaller policy. And then you're, it's paid up for, for however it's paid up. So it does say the reduced policy built its own cash value and will remain in force until maturity or death. So keep it simple, reduce paid up. You're gonna take the savings, buy a smaller policy for as whatever amount that cash value policy will buy. And you just have to pay a lump sum. The cash value does continue to grow in that example. And those are all the definitions you need to know when it comes to non-forfeiture values. The next thing that we're gonna cover is called dividends. Okay, so I wanna make sure you understand what a dividend is. Dividends and insurance and dividends and investments are completely two different things. So in investments, if you have stocks, you have bonds, you have mutual funds, and every year or every quarter, they give you a dividend, that is because the company profited and they are giving you a return on your investment. Now, life insurance companies will try to sell life and dividend, life insurance dividends as it's a great thing. Now, the definition of a dividend is nothing more than you overpaid, they overcharged you, and they're refunding you the money they overcharged you. So simple definition. Dividend is a return of excess premiums. So how crazy is that? And the fact is that they overcharge you. And if you ever listen to insurance companies and they'll say, yeah, we paid out more dividends than any other company, or we paid out X amount of dividends for last year. They're openly telling you they overcharge their clients and they're trying to sell it as if they gave them a return on their investment. And legally, they're allowed to do that. That's just, just uh, the, the verbiage in insurance contracts. So when you receive a dividend in insurance policies, the money is not taxable. So dividends, again, key bullet points for dividends. It's a return of excess premium. They are not taxable and they are not guaranteed. Make sure you know those three. They are not taxable and they are not guaranteed. Uh, the first dividend could be paid as early as the first policy anniversary, but must occur no later than the end of the third year of the policy. You might see that as you see it in bold, uh, bold lettering. Um, I really don't remember seeing that on the exam. Policy owners have options for taking these dividends in one of several ways, okay? So now I'm going to give you an acronym called CRAPO. So I want you to write dividends, and then I want you to write the acronym C-R-A-P-P-O. So you're going to have a uh, an acronym called CRAPO, C-R-A-P-P-O. So the first one stands for cash. So when they give you a refund, you just say, hey, send me the check, send me the cash, I'll, and I'll do whatever I want to do with it. Uh, and usually this is given to you annually. Uh, the next one is called reduction of premium. Write that down. The R is reduction of premium. And you say, they, they give you the option of what to do with your money. And you just simply say, hey, listen, in this example, the insurer uses the dividends to pay next year's premium. So for example, if a policy owner usually pays an annual premium of $1,000 and they have a $100 dividend, the policy owner would just say, hey, keep that premium and next year I'll just pay $900 instead of 1000 It's pretty simple. Add it to next year's premium. Reduction of premium, it goes to next year's premium. Just keep it simple like that. Accumulation at interest. The insurance company keeps the dividends in the account where it accumulates interest. The policy owner is allowed to withdraw the dividend at any time. The amount of the interest is specified in the policy and compounds annually. 
Although the dividends themselves are not taxable, the interest on the dividend is to the policy owner who is credited to the policy, whether or not the, the policy owner receives the interest. So look at it this way. Accumulation at interest is a temporary option. I want you to write that down. Accumulation interest is the temporary option where you tell the insurance company, hold on to the money, invest it. And if that investment earns interest, you must pay taxes. That's a common sense thing you want to know. Anytime you earn interest, you are taxed on that interest. The next one is called paid up additions. The dividends are used as a single premium in addition to the face amount of a permanent policy. All this says is that you say, hey, listen, I don't want the money. Buy me a, buy me single, you just use whatever money this is, buy me some extra coverage and increase my death benefit. So paid up addition is, hey, listen, whatever I use it, whatever uh, money this is, add it on to um, and give me more coverage. And then next to this, this is the automatic option which means if you don't open up that letter and, and tell the insurance company what you want to do with this coverage, or sorry, this check, they're just going to say, okay, well, you didn't let us know. We're going to automatically buy you more coverage. The insurance company's game is to keep as much money, as much money of your money and their pocket. Next one is paid up option. So the first one was paid up addition. This one is paid up option. Usually the insurer first accumulates the dividends at interest, then uses the accumulated dividends plus interest and the policy's cash value to pay the policy up early. In other words, if the insured has a continuous premium whole life policy in which the premiums are paid until 100 using the paid up options, the policy owner will just pay up the policy early. So all this means, Jason, is paid up option means you're just using the premium to pay up more coverage, uh, to pay the policy off faster. You're just gonna say in bold lettering, you're using the dividends to pay the policy up early. Paid up options is you're paying the policy up early. That's all that means. The last one is called one year term. So they'd say, hey, listen, here's a dividend. Here's a return of your money. What do you want to do with it? Well, guess what? Just buy me some extra coverage for one year. Whatever amount of coverage, whatever amount of coverage this money will buy me, buy me a one-year term policy. And that's simple, one-year term. And that is all you need to know about dividends. So as you study and go through questions of dividends, Make sure that you understand the definitions and you'll be fine. The third and final part of this chapter is settlement options. I want you to write just like you did the, the acronym for CRAPO, you're gonna write settlement options. And this is gonna be a uh, acronym called CLIF. You're gonna write C L. I F F. Settlement options are what you can do with money from a life insurance policy or an annuity. So when someone passes away, you get to choose how you receive the money. So if you're the beneficiary, Jason, you get to receive, choose how you receive the money. So again, if you see the word C, that stands for cash. You just say, hey, give me the cash. Give me the lump sum. So the first settlement option is cash payment. This again is the automatic option. And this is paid in a lump sum. They give you, they give the cash, they give you the check to, to the um, beneficiary. Now the second one is life income. I want you to write that down, life income. Life income is also known as straight life, which provides the recipient with income that he or she cannot outlive. So give an example. If someone chooses life income, Jason, 
and they say, hey, my, I'm inheriting this money. I don't want the cash. Just give me a check every month. And they will receive this money until they pass away. Now, this is beneficial because this is generally the highest. This is generally the way that you'll receive the highest amount of money every month or every quarter, however you receive that money. Now, the downside to this is you chose life income. What happens if you choose life income and you die the next year? All of that money that was supposed to be paid to you, the insurance company now keeps. So your family will not receive that money for the rest of their life. Unless you choose life income with period certain. So write that down. You want to make sure you write. There are certain circumstances where you choose life income with period certain option, which is generally, this is the best of both worlds. You can receive the highest amount of money monthly, but you also add in a buffer that if you pass away, that your family might receive the money for maybe an additional 10, 10 years. So life income with period certain just remember that this is the best of, best of both worlds that if someone passes away that they can receive their family can receive some of the money for a period of time the next one interest only so and cliff that i stands for interest only this again right temporary option next to this temporary option all you're doing is you're going to tell the insurance company, hey, I don't know what I want to do with the money just yet. Invest the money for me. Pay me interest. And then we'll figure out what we want to do with it later. Now, again, if you earn any interest, guess what you have to do? You have to pay taxes. So interest only, temporary option. They will invest the money, hold on to it for you for a period of time until you decide what you want to do with it later. Now, the first F stands for fixed period. This is pretty simple. Fixed period says, hey, listen, I want to receive the money for a specific amount of years. So they will take the, they will take the amount of money and they will divvy it, divvy it up over the certain amount of years until that time is paid out. Then the last F is called fixed amount, which guess what? This says, pay me a fixed dollar amount until the money runs out. So fixed amount says that you will receive specific amounts of installments until the money is exhausted and it runs out. And that is all you need to know about fixed amounts. I'm sorry, settlement options, dividends, and reduced uh, not for future options. Now, could you go over fixed period again? One more time? Yeah, can you shorten that, please? Can I go back to it? Yeah, please. I'm sorry, I can't hear you guys. At the last F is fixed amount. So fixed period and fixed amount. Yeah, I'm not saying, could you, uh, could you repeat uh, what you said about fixed period? For sure, for sure. Okay, I didn't so get fixed, that. fixed period mm -hmm. is that you receive a certain amount of money for a certain number of years. So if you say, hey, listen, I want to receive this money for the next 20 years, they will divvy that money up over the next 20 years until the period of time is run out. Thank you. I got it. Okay. You, you need me to go over fixed amount also? No, I got that one. Thank okay. You. So now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to go over the acronyms that you should have written down, but I'll give you an, an idea of how it will look. So you'll write on the exam, they're going to give you what is called a, a, a dry erase board. So on this dry erase board, you can't write anything on that exam or on that sheet of paper until you have pressed the start button on the exam. So what's gonna happen, Jason, is you're gonna press start and you're not even gonna look at the exam. 
you're going to go through and write down all these little acronyms. And this is why you want to memorize this non forfeiture options. And you know what? I, I, I know that acronym. It's REC. Dividends. Well, I know what that one is. That one's called CRAPO. And if you can memorize this acronym, it will help you memorize the definition, help you remember the definitions. And then we got settlement options. Settlement options, again, is what you can do with the life insurance policy and um, annuities, how you receive the money. This one is called Cliff. So just based off of your memory now, what is, um, Jason, let's, let's try this. What does the R stand for without looking at your notes? What does the R stand for and reduce pay down? If you don't remember, that's okay. Uh, Leo? It's reduced <laughs> paid up, which all that means is you're going to buy a, you're taking the cash value, you're going to buy a smaller policy, and then you're paid up paying the policy. Extended term. This just says, if I can write, extended term, all this says is that you're going to take the cash value and buy whatever amount of coverage you can buy in a term policy. And then the C and not for future options stands for cash surrender, meaning you're going to take the money and you're going to run. Then we're going to come over here to dividends. The C again stands for cash. You're gonna take the money, you're just, hey, give me the check. The R in this stands for reduced premium accumulation at interest paid up addition. Paid up option, one year term. And then over here, settlement option, C stands for cash. L stands for life income. I stands for interest only. The first F stands for fixed period. And then the second F stands for fixed amount. So if I've memorized these definitions and I can memorize what this is, it's a cheat sheet. You can go into the exam and say, bam, man, I already know this. This is a big portion of the exam. And you don't want to miss this because these are easy definitions. That makes sense? Good. So that's what I want to share with you on that exam. That, that is really one of the biggest parts of the exam are those things right there. So Jason, we're gonna go ahead and take a quiz. We're gonna have to try this and we're gonna see what, what we do. And you guys that are re-watching this, take this quiz with us. So under all the non-forfeiture options, all of the following are non-forfeiture options, except, and Jason, I want you to answer these one with me, okay? What do you think this one is? You put D. It says, which of the following are not, or all the following are except. So you're looking for the wrong answer. See, if you look back at your sheet of paper, what is REC? R-E-C. So which one do you think it is now? You think it's C, okay, C. Perfect, exactly. So you see how this is an easy answer you could get? So, what type of insurance would be used for a return of premium rider? See, that was one of the terminologies we covered in the first video, return of premium rider. What type of insurance would be used for return of premium rider? Well, I'll just kind of go over these definitions again. Decreasing term, that is used for a mortgage. 
That is something you generally will use in order to uh, cover a mortgage, annual renewable term insurance. That will renew every year. The price will go up. You don't answer any medical questions. Increasing term is a writer generally added onto a policy to keep up with the cost of living. And that will allow you to keep uh, your policy increasing every year. Generally, you don't have to go through any medical questions to do this one. And D is level term, which this is a policy that stays in place for a certain amount of years. The premiums don't go up, neither does the face amount. And, and the rider is, a, is nothing more than an add-on to the policy. Jade, which one do you think this is? Jason, what do you think it is? Huh? So Jason says C. So let's think about it. Increasing term is already a rider. And you're talking about the return of premium rider. So let's do process of elimination. It's probably not going to be C. It's not A. So let's go, let's go with D, which is uh see what happened was y'all probably are gonna be looking at it like no nah. <laughs> Freaking slow. I get, sometimes I see return of premium rider is achieved by using the increasing term insurance when the pop would add it to a whole life policy. Because uh, I remember, because I remember we were talking about it. I was like increasing term. It's like I remember when you said uh, when they add on returning, like you know, returning riders. Don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when added on to a whole life policy, it provides level of death and rest. So let, let me give you, in the real world, you generally don't have return of premium writers on a whole life policy. So when they throw out all these term insurance policies, uh, got it. look at Jason, you got it right. I'm so used to the real world that this crap doesn't make sense to me on this test. But good job, guys. If, you, if you're rewatching this and you got that right, great job. In case of where the primary beneficiary predeceases the insured, and the event of the insured's death, the death proceeds will be paid to who? So A, the insured spouse, the policy owner, the insurance company, or the contingent beneficiary. Remember, do the process of elimination, get rid of the first two most nonsense answers and, and level this thing down to the best best two. So the, the primary dies before the insured. So the death benefit will be paid to who? To me, I think it's either A or D. I'm gonna go with D though. You're gonna go with D? Yes. Okay. Well, it never said that the person was married. So, okay. so yeah, so you guys are correct. It is the contingent beneficiary. That's actually the question you asked earlier off camera, is that the contingent beneficiary receives a death benefit if the primary predeceases the insured. If there are no designated beneficiaries uh, surviving uh, the insured, the benefits will be paid to the estate of the insured. What two terms are associated directly with premium? So this is asking how are the payments made? What are the best two words that describe on how payments are made? Again, let's get rid of two of the most common sense ones or nonsense ones. Um, I, I think A and B, A and B don't make sense to me. So I'm gonna say- Get rid of A? Yeah, I'm getting rid of A because- you know, Okay, so let me just kind of cover what A is. Fixed and variable, those are describing the type of interest rates you can get, the type of accounts that you can get. So yeah, you can get rid of that one. Um, term and permanent, those are not premiums. Those are types of policy. So you, you can get rid of that. Um, renewable, renewable and convertible premium, not, not even a phrase. That just simply means on is a term policy renewable or convertible. So the way that you pay premiums are either a fixed rate, which is leveled, or flexible, which is a payment that can be that can fluctuate up and down. So I don't know if you chose D, but that is. 
chose, yeah, I chose C, but C. Okay, makes sense. Then. Okay. And the reason I'm trying to break this down is that when you guys go back and re-listen to this, I'm I'm kind of actually reteaching you the definitions. Uh, okay. What is the other term for cash payment settlement options? So go back to settlement options and what is what is a what is another word for cash? If you pay one big payment, what is another word for that? I cover this on the first, on the second chapter of of single premium life. You you get you pay in one big payment, or you can get paid in one big payment. What's another word for that? So Jade says it's not A or C. What do you think, Jason? I think it's B. You think it's B? Well, B, the definition of B is face amount, which is another word for death benefit. Could you explain why it couldn't be A or C? Well, A stands for principal amount. I don't know what the hell that means. I mean, make sense. Uh, proceeds, that is another word for death benefit. Okay. So this one is you're receiving a cash payment. Another word for cash payment would be what? I already get, I already did the elimination, guys. It's lump sum. Yeah. Uh, so lump sum upon the death of the insurer, the contract is paid and the proceeds are paid in cash and the lump sum. So when you see the word cash, write the word lump sum. Lump sum, cash, one big payment. All right, which of the following statements is true concerning accidental death insurance or that accidental death writer? Uh, this is also known as triple indemnity rider. It is a rider only added to the insurance over 65. It is available in group insurance and it will pay double or triple the face amount. Well, I can tell you right off the bat, accidental death rider does not have to be added to someone only over 65. There are policies that are this over 65. And it is not only offered in group insurance, you can buy these policies individually. So this right here again is definitions. If you know what triple indemnity writer means, and if you know what accidental death writer means, this is a pretty simple question. So make sure you understand what accidental death writer is. What do we wanna go with? I don't think it's B or D. So well, I already eliminated B and C, so it's it's going to be A or A or D. Okay. I'm gonna go with A. I feel I feel some strong with A. Okay, J Jason says A. What do you say? All right. So you want to go with A? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go with it. So it is D. So Jason Jade said D. So now what we need to do is we need a we need to see that accidental death rider pays two or three times the amount and the death of an accident as defined in the policy, which occurs in 90 days of such as a, of an accident. Again, all you need to know is that that is the definition of accidental death rider. It pays two or three times the amount if you die in an accident. Okay, which of the following statement is true about policy assignment? Remember policy assignment is is uh, they about to give <laughs> about to give it away right now with the definition. This is the definition. Which of the following statement is true about policy assignments? Give it to you. I will give you something. It has nothing to do with beneficiaries. I think it's B. You think it's what? B. B as in boy? Yes. You both have it correct. Great job. Transfer of ownership. 
and and assignments you have two types of uh, of of transfers you have collateral which is the temporary option and then you have absolute which is the permanent option transfer of complete rights uh, which of the following is true of a ch of children's writers added on to an insurance permanent life insurance policy? So a writer is generally an add on to the policy which will cost more money. But when you have a child writer onto the policy, you pay for one child and it will cover all of them until either the age of 18 to 21 on the exam for the exam purposes. So this question is, which one is true? It is a permanent insurance. The policy covers only the natural children of the insured. That is not true. You can have a niece, grandchild, adopted child, stepchild on a policy. Each child must show evidence of insurability. And it is a term coverage that is convertible to permanent at a prior age of maximum out the coverage age. Which one do we, we want to go with? I say B as in dog. B, okay. Jade, what do you want to go with? D, you guys are absolutely right. Congratulations. So at age 21 or 18 years old, depending on this exam, it will tell you that the par person's policy is not a term policy. I'm sorry, it is not a permanent policy. It is a term writer that when they are 18 or 21, they will be kicked off the policy and they can get additional coverage without going through evidence of insurability. Great job. An insured purchased a life insurance policy on his life, naming his wife as the primary beneficiary and his daughter as the contingent beneficiary. Under what circumstances could the daughter collect the death benefit? All right, an insured purchased a life insurance policy on his life, naming his wife as the primary and his daughter has to consent in, which is the, what is the circumstances that the daughter could receive the death benefit? Wait, let me look at it again, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Re remember, this, this is a very simple question. The spouse is the primary, the daughter is the contingent. So the daughter wants to collect the money, so who does she have to take out first? Yes, so the mom has to be taken out. So the answer would be what? Oh shit. And then she died. So B. I think it's B. You wanna go with B? Yes. Well, let's go through that. When the insured dies, the primary and contingent beneficiary share death benefits equal. No, the contingent can only get the money if the primary is dead prior to the insured. Read the question again, Jason. Okay. The insured dies, the insured purchased a life insurance policy. The wife is the primary, the daughter is the contingent. The daughter wants to collect the money. So the answer is gonna be not B. And you do not need the primary's beneficiary rent consent. That's not a thing. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I wasn't even looking at that. Okay, and it's A, okay. It's A, absolutely right. There you go, good job, Jayden. Good job, Jaden Jason. All right, a writer attached to a life insurance policy that provides coverage on the insured's family members is called what? Writer attached to a life insurance policy that provides coverage on the insurance family's member's life. It's called what? I say, I say B, prior writer. Payer writer? So payer writer is used for minors, for okay. children that are under the age of 18. Um, that would not be the answer for this one, but you would have that on there. And there's no such thing as a juvenile writer. Okay, C. It is going to be C. It is other insured riders, which allows you to have other family members on your policy. Uh, 
So just make sure you know that, that the other insured rider is generally other family members. And that is generally on a permanent policy or these people have term riders that can be converted to a permanent policy later. According to the entire contract, a policy must contain three things. Uh, well, let's go through the definitions. A buyer's guide. A buyer's guide is nothing more than a cost comparison of different policies that a client must or that can request upon buying the policy. It is not uh, mandatory that you do provide that, but it can be provided if you did ask for it. Um, second one is listing of the insured's former insurers for incontestability reasons. That's dumb, not a thing. So the three things are a copy of an application of the insurance or a declaration page of the summary of the insured. I see. See? What do you go with, see? With Jade? What do you think? Okay, you both said C and you both are correct. Good job. So let me kind of give you what is in the entire contract. It is the policy copy of the application and any writers. That is the, uh, that is the, yeah. Okay, regarding the free look provision, the insurance company must allow the policy owner to return a policy for full refund, cannot charge premiums after 10 days, must issue a policy or free policy for 30 to 31 days or must issue a policy free policy for 10 days this is just asking what is the definition of free look I'll say a what do you think jade okay you guys are correct yeah remember for your state make sure you know what the dates are in every state they could uh, be different in the state of Florida. It is 14 days of the policy when it is delivered. The free look provision allows a person to look at a policy for 14 days. If they are not happy, they may return it for a full refund. Uh, which of the following when attached to a permanent life insurance policy allows the policy owner to customize the policy to provide an additional amount of temporary insurance on the insured and allows amount of temporary insurance to cover family members. I mean, well, we just kind of went over this. Uh, when attached to a permanent policy, which allows the policy owner to customize the policy to provide additional amounts of temporary insurance. Well, this one already gave you the answer. What type of insurance is temporary? Term writer? Huh? A term writer, A. Hey. Correct, A. Hey. There's two types of insurance. It's term, which is temporary, and there's whole life, which is permanent. And generally, most writers are always term insurance. That can be later converted to whole life. Just for the exam purposes, you, you want to know. All right, which of the following protects the insured from unintentional lapse due to non-payment? I just learned this one. Hold on, not. It's not A and it's not B. Okay, you think it's not A, it's not B. No, no. C, C, I said C. You say C, Jade, what do you say? No, no, I said, I don't think it's A or C. I think it's B. You think it's B. Okay, Jade, do you think it's what? Jade doesn't know. Well, Jade does not think it's B. <laughs> Okay. So anyways, let's go through this for uh, the sake of it. So let's go through the definition. Reinstatement means the policy has already lapsed and you're going back to get it reinstated. So this would not protect you from unintentional lapse because it's already lapsed. Yeah. Reduce paid up is a non-forfeiture option that if the policy is about to lapse, you're going to take the cash value and buy a smaller policy. Automatic premium loan is where the insurance company will take money from your life and from your cash value to pay your policy premiums to prevent it from lapsing. 
and extended term is the automatic option that when your policy is about to lapse, you use the non forfeiture option to buy a term policy for the fate for the normal uh, for the size of your whole life policy. So the answer would be what this. I still say B. B is a boy. I'm not. I don't know, like if I'm right or wrong, but I I quite don't understand this one. But I say B. Okay, the answer is C. Ah, oh, what? And the only reason you don't know this is because you haven't looked at the definitions. Don't beat yourself up. If you just look at the definitions, automatic premium loan, the definition is right there. It's unintentional policy lapse. That's all that means. This is nothing more than a definition, guys. Don't let the, all these questions right here are nothing but definitions. If you get good at the terminology, you will pass this exam. Before you go on, could you, could you explain what's it like the difference between reduced paid up option and automatic pay up? Yeah, well, there are two different, there are two different things. So reduced paid up is the non-forfeiture option that you're going to take the cash value and buy a smaller policy. The automatic premium loan is they're just going to take money from the savings and don't let the policy lapse. They're going to take a portion of the money and pay the premium for you. Okay. Okay. And, and from there, any time that there's a premium loan, they do charge you interest on it. So they will charge you interest to move money from your savings account to pay your premiums. Uh, again, trash ass policies. Um, and then the, the last one, guys, an insured owns 50,000 of whole life policy. At age 47, the insured decides to cancel his policy and exercise the extended term option for the policy's cash value, which of the 20,000, which is $20,000, what would be the face amount of the new term policy? Again, this is nothing more than the definition of extended term. This just says, hey, listen, what's the definition of an extended term? The policy is $50,000 and they have $20,000 sitting in the, um, the cash value. So it says what the insurer decides to cancel his policy and exercise the extended term option for the cash value, which is currently $20,000. What would be the face amount of the new term? Well, guess what? B. B? We should B? I D. said B. D is in dog. <laughs> uh, you sure? Yeah, I think I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, what the hell, man? <laughs> no. Remember, extended term, very easy. You're going to buy the same face amount. Okay. You're just, instead of having a whole life policy that you're going to continue paying on, mm -hmm. you're going to take that 20 grand up front and buy a $50,000 term policy. So extended term, the automatic option is you're gonna take that 20 grand that's sitting in the savings and buy a $50,000 policy. And this is just a definition. The face of the term policy would be the same amount policy provided under the whole life policy. So again, the definition of extended term, you're gonna buy the same amount of coverage the whole life policy offers, except you're going to buy it in a term policy. So where did we end up? We still got an 80 on the exam. Okay, so so we're good job. We still passed that. Uh, I would make sure that you guys definitely come back and review uh, the, this chapter right here. Uh, so this is going to end our recording for chapter three. Make sure you go back and review this as many times as you need to make sure that you are getting the definitions, guys. Okay.